do I need um a book to prop this up? I hope this live don't mess up this time like it did all the other damn times. Hey y'all. <laughs> Let me see something. Oops. Drop something. That's because my energy is like on 10 today. It dead ass is on 10. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I got that good pad of chewy. Cleanse your hands with it. Can you guys see me good? Mm. Okay, y'all, put something in the chat and let me know that y'all is here. Okay. Yay, I'm happy y'all here. Hey. Hey, I'm just trying to get my little area situated. I love these crystals, y'all. Clear quartz, that's my crystal. I be channeling like hell with these. These and selenite. I got a big ass selenite wand. This will turn your frequency up to the max, though. You got to be careful. My my big selenite wand, oh, baby, that shit turn you up so bad. You'll be vibrating, literally. <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 hey. I'm so happy today. I'm happy every day, but I'm really happy today because all the stuff I've been finding out, I'm super happy. Hey, everyone. Cheers. Hey. Okay, y'all. So I just wanted to come commune with y'all. I need to talk about some things with y'all real quick because there's a specific message that I was told that I need to get out to y'all. Now, this message is specifically, it is for the indigenous people of the planet, specifically. Um, you can still watch if you're not, but this is a message that's specifically for the indigenous people of the planet because I got to get this. This is a responsibility that I have to get out. Okay, so... Um, oh, you're new to the live? Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Yes, good evening to everyone. Um, first of all, how was that eclipse? How was that Scorpio eclipse for y'all? Because I think this is on the heels of what I'm coming on here to speak about is, is that Scorpio eclipse and kind of like what I learned from it, and I want to really share with you guys what I learned. Yes, feathers up. You know what the F going on. Yeah, feathers all the way up, okay? Because I've been, y'all, Mother Earth has been, like, communing with me, speaking to me, like, telling me what she desires for, for us. And it's a lot, you guys. It's a lot. Like, I was very, very overwhelmed by this information. But I'm like, okay, I got to get this out. So you guys know how um, we know that Scorpio rules the ancestors, right? And Scorpio, you know, rules the dead, things of that nature. Our ancestors, ancestor veneration, all of those things. So I have been in deep, deep communion and contact with my personal ancestors, and I've been doing a lot of work because I have assignments that I have to complete as far as correcting karma within my bloodline, because that's your responsibility when you're a priestess. And, um, you know, it's been very eye opening for me because I found out a lot about karma through this information. And I was specifically told to share this information with my viewers because this is very, very important. Now it has to deal with the number eight. Now we know that eight is the number for Scorpio. It represents the infinity sign. And I personally have a lot of personal connections with the number eight in my life, specifically dealing with my grandmother that just passed away. Now, 
Um, I got my notes because I wrote a lot of notes about there's a some other stuff I'm going to talk about too. But this was the this was a transmission that was very important for me to get up get across to y'all. Okay, so now this deals with the number eight. Now I've been doing some. I've been connecting with the matriarchs in my family. Okay, on the other side. And I have been dealing with generational patterns that I have been noticing with it within my life, within my daughter's life, and come to find out my grandmother's life, right? So I was trying to figure out because this is very important, right? If you're if you're like a real priestess, this is very important to find out what happened in your grandparents' life and what wounds that they got and how they got these wounds and how it trickles down into you and your family. This is very important to understand um, because the information that I've been getting basically from her was dealing with this generational pattern because one thing that you guys need to understand about karma is that it continues to be passed down through your bloodline until it's resolved. Also, when the karma is not resolved, it doubles. It doubles, meaning that the cost goes up. You got to pay more when you don't pay it with one generation. Okay. So you guys know that I've had videos on my channel talking about uh, the ancestors and how karma is passed down through the generations, right? Because that's what we're getting ready to get into right now. Okay, now we know that Scorpio deals with a certain aspect of karma, okay? This deals with the genetics, okay? You're genetically tied in with your ancestors. Whatever trauma or issues that they dealt with that they did not resolve during their life, it gets passed down to you and your offspring and and it keeps on going until it is resolved okay now the bad part about that is that it doubles right because we're dealing this is dealing with the law of eight okay and i'm gonna break it down for you i'm gonna break it down for you guys this deals with the law of eight so when your karma is not resolved it doubles and it quadruples as it gets passed down through the generation so you have to take care of this karma it does not go away. Just because somebody passes away, whatever issues that they were dealing with in their life, guess what? It gets passed down to you. Now you got to deal with some stuff that you didn't even start. I'm getting the symbol of the snake and the serpent also, which is like this energy that kind of like it um, slithers its way through the DNA and continues to be passed down and it duplicates itself as an issue that needs to be resolved from the next person. Because what you need to understand about your bloodline is that you have a responsibility in your bloodline. Yes, you are responsible. Now, I know a lot of people don't connect with their natural bloodline. Like some of you guys may have come from effed up families and things like that. But the, the point of the matter is you're still tied to them through your blood and the blood is the spirit and the blood is alive. The blood is where the spirit is. So regardless of the fact, even if you don't mess with your family at all, you need to work to resolve those karmic issues. OK, now or else it's going to affect your children and their children and this and this and that. And then you're going to end up getting yourself in very deep karmic debt that you're not able to get out of because it's too much to resolve. OK, so this is how spiritual debt works. And Scorpio rules spiritual debt. Spiritual debt and the, the whole energy of debt, like they tell you in astrology, Scorpio rules debt and things like that and bondage. That's what it's talking about. You get things inherited through your bloodline, okay, that you have to resolve. Now, we understand that some of these things I know you don't want to deal with, right? Certain people you don't like, 
you don't want to deal with them, whatever the case may be, but you need to do it for your future generations and for your children. Okay. Now, anyways, back to what I was saying about me communing with my grandmother and I was like doing readings and things like that, trying to figure out what happened in her childhood and what was going on in her childhood. Cause my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, she's one of my guardians, my spiritual guardians. So me and her are very, very close. Okay. And um, basically I ended up finding out that she had an issue with her father, who is my great grandfather. And I'm not going to go into details about exactly what happened, but basically I ended up finding out he mis mistreated her and she developed very, very bad trauma from her relationship with her father. So then I end up seeing that that exact trauma that she experienced with her father was affecting me and my daughter till this day. We are experiencing the energy of it, even though we have nothing to do with it, right? Like we have nothing to do with what happened there, but we do have something to do with it, right? Because we come from her womb. Okay, so there was this energetic pattern, which you guys will call it a generational curse, but I don't like to call it a generational curse because I don't like to use the word curse. What it is, is it's a generational pattern that develops inside of a human being. It's a feeling or emotion. It could be a feeling, um, feeling thwarted, feeling blocked, feeling abused by a person or feeling uh, self-worth and self-value issues, feeling like you're not good enough. All of these types of things, which could be something that she felt. And that same feeling and emotion gets passed down through the bloodline, right? So I was like, okay, so me and my daughter are basically dealing with this energy that we didn't start, we didn't create, but I need to resolve this because it's it's affecting my daughter, right? Even though we appear to have nothing to do with it, but you do have something to do with it because we're all connected, right? So in a nutshell, I... um child y'all it was drama okay <laughs> let me tell y'all it was drama honey it yeah it's not fair i know it's not fair but i'm gonna I'm give you guys the science behind it so baby i was just like seeing like the dynamic between my grandmother and her dad and like the shit that was going on with him and i was pissed the hell off because i was like why the hell did you do this to her like this is messed up so like me and him got beef now like we got beef and this is this is talking about like you guys know when you guys have people in your bloodline that you do not f with that's how i feel about him because i'm like why the hell did you do that you didn't have no reason to do that but he was dealing with mental issues and all this other stuff so i was like this is messed up like i don't mess with you because your treatment toward my grandmother is what started this whole karmic cycle with the women in my family that we're all dealing with, right? But of course, I'm the only one that's like aware of all of this, right? So I'm the one that's responsible for it. And um, and yeah, Scorpio deals with breaking karmic cycles. Yeah, that I'm bringing this up because everything I'm talking about right now is because of the Scorpio eclipse that just passed. And keep in mind, when an eclipse happens, you're still inside of the gate of that eclipse for six months after. So this energy is very relevant. Uh, relevant. <laughs> this energy is very relevant. Yeah, relevant. This energy is very relevant right now, right? Okay, so... When I tell you I was pissed at my great grandfather, like I was ready to throw hands like we was we was getting into it. OK, because I was just like. You really sat the fuck up here and there was no reason for him to treat my grandmother that way. Like it was just on some like really effed up shit. And he has some shit that he has to deal with, you know, within his own psyche and shit. But I was like, OK. I don't mess with you because, you know, you started this karmic cycle that my grandmother's dealing with. My grandmother had communicated to me that she can only do so much on the other side because time doesn't exist over there. So in the spiritual realm, there's no time, right? Like everything's happening right now. 
That's why it's very hard to predict things in the spiritual dimension. That's why I don't know how people are able to predict dates and stuff like that, because time doesn't exist over there. Like it, it doesn't exist at all. So it's like hard to predict stuff. But anyways, so she was like, I can only do so much on this side. And basically she needs me to come like step in and assist because I'm able to like make changes and things like that through my own like physical body and things like that. And this is the thing when you resolve a karmic knot or karmic loop in your family, that releases all of your ancestors from that karmic loop. So it's very, very important. So remember, I told you guys about the number eight, right? It just it goes like this. Keep circling back and around. Karma doesn't go nowhere until you resolve it. You have to resolve it. So this specific wound has to deal with the patriarchs and the men in our family. Now, the men in our family are very powerful men. They're alpha males, okay? They have very strong, powerful, controlling energy about them. And me and a lot of like the women in my family, we've been subjugated to basically it's patriarchal control. That's basically what it is. Like do what I say and you can't object to what it is that I say because you're a woman and you have to listen to me and I'm the man. And even though I am um, I may be wrong in what it is that I'm telling you, you still have to listen because I'm the man and I'm the authority in this situation, right? Like that type of energy. And so I was like, okay, boom. From that specific event, I saw the branches and the trees of how that energy spread across my entire bloodline, like with the women and the same situation repeated over and over again with the women in my family, whether it is that they married a controlling man or their man just had a very strong energy and he was the ruler and you had to listen to what he says. It repeated so many times just from that one incident, just from that one incident, y'all, if that incident was resolved, We wouldn't have to be dealing with that in the family. Like we wouldn't have to be dealing with that energy. So do you understand the reason why you have to resolve this? Okay, so boom. So then I'm like, okay, I'm going to work on this. This is like a job that I have to do. I'm going on jobs. I'm going on missions. I'm like, okay, boom. So I got to resolve this. So I've been under a lot of pressure, you guys, because I'm just like, oh, this is so much work that I have to do. I'm like sweating. I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to fix this? And the only way to fix it is within. You have to fix it within yourself. okay? And, you know, learn to like stand in your power and you have to see the results of how your life is playing out and how a lot of how your life is playing out doesn't even have anything to do with you. That's the crazy part about karma and inheritance, karmic inheritance. A lot of the stuff that you deal with doesn't even have anything to deal with you directly. It has to deal with your ancestors. And because that energy was not resolved and it's a toxic energy, It's going to keep on repeating until it gets resolved. And then you get more. Like I said, it doubles until you learn the lessons. It's just like a school system. I always tell you guys how life is like a school system, right? You don't turn in your homework. Well, guess what? Now you got extra work that you got to make up, right? Okay, boom. So, yeah, so when they tell you guys that you're the chain breaker of your bloodline, take that very, very serious. Because if you're the chain breaker, you're the one to be, you're the savior of your bloodline. You're the hero. You're the savior. You're the chosen one. You're the one that your bloodline has been waiting for to save them, to save them because they still need saving. They're on the other side dealing with bullshit still because it hasn't been resolved. This karmic loop shit, this Scorpio shit, this number eight shit, Oh, you think because you pass away, your karma just gets erased? Like, no, nah, that's not how it works. It keeps on incarnating. And what I heard was, and I'm going to get into this when I get into the earthly wisdom, specifically dealing with the black race, quote unquote. Honey, I saw that we have so much karma. Like, it's freaking crazy how much karma that we have. It's insane. And the karma that we have, even as a race, 
has to deal with the earth and, and being the guardians of the earth and how we drop the ball on that shit. I'm going to get to that in a second. So anyways, going back to the ancestors. So what I found out was that when it comes to your ancestors, right? You're only responsible. It goes back to the law of eight is what I was told. So basically you're only responsible for your great, great grandparents. Cause that's eight people, right? So you got your parents, that's two. You got your grandparents, that's four. And then you got your great, great parents, that's eight. Okay, those eight, those are, that's as far as your responsibility goes. So that's why I've been dealing with my great, great grandparents and, and finding out who they are and their issues and everything that got going on, honey. I found out their personalities, everything. We've been kicking it. Honey, it's been a whole fiasco. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know this. I'm like finding out so much stuff, right? So they all got their own little issues and shit. And I'm just like, oh, damn, like, OK, I see where I got this personality trait from. I see where I got like my fire from. I see where I got like my sensitive side from. It's, it's all coming from them. Right. But I definitely got that you're not responsible for anything past those eight ancestors. So past your great great grandparents, you are not responsible for anything past them, anything past them that's above your pay grade. Now, this is dealing with Capricorn because how it runs is it runs like a hierarchy. So you guys know how um, you guys will see like the family tree or whatever when you guys will go on those um, genealogy sites or whatever, or just a family tree. You guys know how you see the family tree and stuff and how it's a hierarchy. This is really what Capricorn is about. Capricorn is about the ancestors and the bloodline that you come from, and there's a pecking order, and there's a hierarchy when you deal with them. Now, but I also got that when it comes to karma, you don't deal directly with your parents' karma. I know, this is crazy, right? You don't deal directly with your parents' karma because I was told that the intensity is too intense between you and your parents to deal with them. So you got to go above them to your grandparents. And you got to deal with them because they are the reason behind anything that any issues that you're dealing with karmically it from your parents. It started it's like it started with your grandparents. Right. And then I and then I was told that you don't deal with your parents because, like I said, the energy is too intense between you and your parents like it's too close you know what i mean it's too close to home and there's too much emotion between you and your parents so you skip over them and you deal with your grandparents now when i say deal with your grandparents don't get it twisted when i say deal with your grandparents like you have to like them or you have to be you have to be sweet to them or love them no you have to understand what issues they were dealing with that's what i'm talking about I'm not talking about go rever them and go burn candles to them just because they're your grandparents. No, you need to understand what psychological things they were dealing with. This is dealing with the psychology. This is Scorpio. You need to understand who they are because who you are is who they are. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Your personal relationship with them, their psychology, their DNA, their blood is in you, which means that you're dealing with their problems in your life. Regardless, it doesn't matter how you want to cut it. So you, you deal with your grandparents and then you also deal with your great grandparents. And then, like I said, anything beyond that, you're not responsible for. OK, that's how it works with the law of eight. That's specifically what I was told by Scorpio and I was by Scorpio, by the Scorpio eclipse. It's still Mercury retrograde, okay? So by the Scorpio clips, because what it was explaining to me is like, this is the reason why you guys are so much in bondage because you guys aren't handling your ancestral stuff. They sitting up here telling you guys it's because of this and it's because of that. No, it's because you're not handling your ancestry. That's why, a lot. that's a lot of the reason why you're in bondage and you're in pain and you can't move forward, right? Now, Keep in mind that everybody is not responsible for this. This is a priestess's or a priest's job within the family, which back in the day when we had tribes, 
we had ceremonies to determine who the priestess was of the family or who the priest was of the family. And it was their responsibility to help clear the family karma, right? Because when you're born as the priestess or the priest of a family in a nutshell, you're born with all the power. You're the power source of your family, which means that you can transgress and you can, um, you can transgress and you can clear karma for your entire bloodline. That's how powerful you are as a priest or a priestess. But back in the day when we had tribes, these things were known, like you would be appointed as that. And you knew what your responsibility was and you knew what you had to do. Every single person in the family is not responsible for the karma because they're not able to be like they're not strong enough. They're not powerful enough or they don't have the divine wisdom in order to do it. But when you're born with the divine wisdom and the divine knowledge, you are responsible to do the transforming and the transmutation of your bloodline. Does that make sense? OK, so. um. So, yeah, that's what I was seeing. So the karma that we're dealing with runs deep. It has a lot to deal with ignorance. Let me tell you, you know how they say shit? You know, that was something that was very derogatory toward us. Oh, you're ignorant. What's ignorance to ignore something, right? You're ignoring something. That's very, very important, right? So you're sitting over here complaining and this and this and that about your life. But spirit is like, you're not doing the work. You're not doing what you're supposed to do, right? So boom, so I was told that. Now, going back even further than that, we want to talk about the karma that we're facing right now. The karma that we're facing right now has everything to deal with our indigenous roots and our connection to the earth and our position as guardians of this earth plane and this, this planet and the power and the metaphysical power and portals of the earth and being the caretakers of the land, we completely drop the ball when it comes to that. Completely. Okay? Because we have jobs as being custodians and landlords of this planet, meaning that we are supposed to protect the earth. We're supposed to protect the earth's secrets which is Scorpio, the earth's powers and all the supernatural shit and everything else that's involved with the earth and the earthly power, because we are literally children of the earth. Let me tell you something. I was shown that literally we, we sprang from the, we were born from the actual earth soil. That's what I was shown. We were literally born from the earth, like literally out of the soil. But it was like more of like a clay is what I was told, like a clay dirt, basically. So we were born literally from the soil. That's how the first human beings got here. They were literally born from the womb of the earth, like they sprouted out from the freaking earth. OK, OK. So we have a responsibility. And again, this deals with Saturn as being the elders, okay? To be the elders of the planet means that you're the first people of the planet. You're the indigenous people of the planet. You have a responsibility to the planet to take care of your mother and to guard your mother. And we have not been doing that because we have been distracted because of all these other things that we've been doing. But this goes way, way deep. This goes back to some stuff that happened way, 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 way long ago. And I was seeing that it had to deal with not, uh, not listening to or not being tapped into your third eye. Okay, so the third eye is your ability to be able to see through things and to see through people to see the truth of who they are at the core. That's the power of the third eye. OK, it's my it's my most powerful chakra. And what happened was, see, this is the thing. People love to blame other people. Right. We love to blame it on other people. But spirit told me that it was because our freaking third eye wasn't open. That's why other people was able to come and do whatever the hell they were supposed to. They wanted to do to us because we weren't looking with the damn third eye. When you have the third eye open, you see through everything, you see through everyone, 
right? So we were not adhering to the natural spiritual laws that we were born under. Well, we are supposed to have our eyes open at all times and we're supposed to know, you already know when you have an open third eye, can't nobody pull the wool over your eyes. Can't nobody lie to you. Can't nobody play you. Can't nobody do shit because you see all. This is the all seeing eye. Okay? So we dropped the freaking ball because we're supposed to be the protectors of this earth. Okay? All of her resources, you want to talk about earthly resources? Okay? What I was shown, this whole entire system, you want to talk about being rich? Do you guys even know what being rich really is? Like, it has nothing to do with this system, being rich. You guys want to know how they say, when they call the soil rich, right? You have rich soil, right? That's being rich, okay? Your DNA, your blood, that's being rich, okay? Because your DNA... And your blood is tied in with the land. You can make the earth do shit. You can control the weather. You can grow crops. You can stop crops from growing. You can build shields around you and fortresses around you. You have earth supreme earthly power. Okay? Because of your DNA and because of who you are. But... We want to sit up here and we want to chase th these things in the fake patrix and call that value? Like, do you even know what real value is? That's not it. Because let me tell you something. This shit is supernatural. The earth is supernatural. This is why they want to keep our attention on some other shit because they don't want us focused on the earth and what she got going on. The earth is magical as fuck. There's gateways. There's dream timelines. There's other dimensions. There's portals. Okay. There's all types of magical shit that you can do with earth energy. They don't want us out in the earth, communing with the earth and finding out these secrets. That's why we're over here focused on TV and celebrities and all this other ish so that we're not focused on nature. Because once we get connected back to the land, it's a wrap. Right. OK, because that's going to unlock your DNA and that's going to give you more powers. And especially to the females, the women, the indigenous women, like we are the ones. This is why we suffer the most. You want to know the real truth, why we suffer the most? Because we are the true guardians of this planet. And we're not in our true power. We're not doing what we're supposed to be doing at all. And so for me right now in my life, I'm not, I'm, I don't play the blame game anymore. It's time to get on your damn job. Okay. That's what it's time to do. No more excuses because the excuses, it has not gotten us anywhere. We're supposed to get on our job. We have to spiritually commune with the land. There's ceremonies, rituals, um, honoring the cycles that are involved, uh, honoring the natural cycles and things like that. We have to commune back with Mother Earth. Mother Earth is so sad right now, so sad. And what I was shown was that the reason why was because her children are not together. And I told you guys this on the last live. I was like, this, she wants us together. We're supposed to be tribal, communing with each other and at one with the natural cycles of the earth. Okay, you guys, we have to stop feeding this fake fucking system. We have to stop this shit. You want to talk about being rich? There's no amount of money in this world that could ever pay for the resources that you have. You have resources that are beyond any value. Nobody could pay you. Nobody could pay you. This shit is ancient, okay? This is ancient abundance, ancient value. It's in your blood. Nobody can take it from you, okay? So we got to get back to the original rooting 
of this planet. We have to. Okay? We have to stop looking at ourselves as being separate from the land, from the people, Mother Earth. Like I told you guys before, she's a living being and so magical and so powerful. She has the real resources, the real intangible, magical resources that can create worlds, that can create universes. You can't put a price tag on this shit. You can't put a dollar amount on this shit. It's beyond all value that could ever be conceived. Okay. Now, if you're in your, if you're in my Patreon, I did a reading on Haiti recently where I talked a little bit about this, about this, these earthly resources and these, um, these this magical energy, this dark matter energy that exists, that is the the source of all creation. Okay. And it's gotten out of our hands. We've lost, we've completely lost touch with it. Completely. Okay. So it's time for us to start getting back because we are the guardians of the earth. And also we are the ones that can revitalize and resurrect the land. Yes, we have the power to resurrect the land. We have the power to bring abundance back to the land. We have the power to bring up crops and we have the, the power to dead crops from growing. Yes, we have the power to control the weather. Also, seen it with my own two eyes. We have power over all this shit. Okay? But it's not about that. It's not about having power over people and all this other ish. Because when you take care of the land, you take care of Mother Earth, she takes care of you. That's just how it goes. Okay? So we need to get out of this false concept that we have about these fake ass resources that don't mean anything your blood your blood how much you're worth do you understand there's no fucking birkin bag rolls royce mansion anything that could fucking pay for how much you are worth because this planet wouldn't even exist without you that's the real t it could not sustain itself Okay, it's the life giving energy It's the life giving source. So this is a wake up call, y'all. The North Node is in Taurus. I've said it till I'm blue in the face. Taurus represents the Earth, the Earth Mother. She's the first mother. That's why she's the first feminine sign. Taurus, the Earth Mother. Mother Earth, the first being in existence. OK, she's just in the form of a planet now, but we're dealing with an entity. We're dealing with the first or we're first source. We're dealing with the first creation now. Um, and the true riches and the true abundance. Right. So and the intangible, the intangible resources. Right. That spiritual power. Um, because the spirit is in the blood. That's why. Yeah, the spirit is in the blood. So, um, also I was speaking with a friend the other day and, um, she was bringing up to me, she showed me something about Taurus, right? And she was saying, basically Taurus, you guys know how they say Taurus is represented by the bull. Well, the female version of a bull is a, what is a cow, the cow. Yes. Hothar, the goddess Hothar. You guys know Harthar from Egypt? Yeah, that's Taurus, the mother that feeds everyone the milk, the Milky Way galaxy. Everything that's happening above is, is no, everything that's happening below is a reflection of what's going on above. Okay, yeah, Taurus gives Hothar energy. Yeah, Taurus is Hothar, the mother. She's the mother. I know we only look at Cancer as being the mother, but Taurus is the mother as well. She's Mother Earth, literally. OK, so um, and see, they tried to take they took everything, anything pertaining to like feminine energy at all. They they took out. That's why they don't, they don't want you guys to know that Taurus is ruled by the earth because they don't want you guys to look at the earth as a goddess, as a mother. But she is. She's all of our mother. She's all of our mother. She's the ancient mother right here. She holds infinite wisdom. 
infinite wisdom. And she's magical as hell. They want to sit over here and tell y'all like, you guys should already know the earth is magical just from like DMT and ayahuasca and stuff like that and mushrooms. Y'all should know off the rip, like mother earth is a trip, literally. And there's way more where that came from. Like I said, there's magical portals. You could transport yourself to other dimensions. She has like so much stuff. This is why they don't want us communing with the land and with earth because it's like, if we find that out, we won't be thinking about this damn system once we see all the damn abundance that we're surrounded by and how we're connected with the abundance and how we can make the abundance appear and we can make the abundance leave. You could do either or. That's why we did ceremony and ritual to Mother Earth. We always, we had to. That was, honey, that was our responsibility. I told you guys about responsibility to the bloodline. Our bigger responsibility is to Mother Earth. We have a responsibility to her that we are supposed to uphold through ceremony, through tradition, all of that stuff. I know they told you guys no, but what the energy that I'm getting with this Uranus and Taurus is back to the future energy. We're going back to the future. So how this is going to play out is we're going back. It's going to seem like we're going back to... Um, the past, like, oh, we're going back to primitive days, but it's really the future. You see what I'm saying? We're going back to the future because you guys know how they got this time traveling energy out, right? We are going back to, but it's really the future because it's like Earth is like the alpha and the omega. Like she's the beginning and she's the end. She's like, oh, y'all went out here. Y'all built this fake ass matrix and y'all thought y'all was going to be living a life and y'all was miserable as hell. And now y'all coming back to mama and y'all thought I was simple and basic. But now you guys are going to see that I'm the end all be all. I'm the beginning and I'm the ending, baby. I'm the past and I'm the future. Because it never stops with her. It's constant evolution, constantly transmuting her and transforming her into other things. Because another thing that I got was that the earth is like an infinite plane is what I was getting, meaning that she can transform herself Taurus and Scorpio, you guys, Taurus and Scorpio axis. She can infinitely transform herself into new states of being. So this earth right here that we got going on, she could step it up. She could transform herself to a higher dimension. And really, if you think earth is beautiful now, once she goes through her transmutation, it's going to be stepped up to even a higher level, baby. That's Scorpio transformation. She can infinitely transform herself into something new. So you're always getting something new. You feel me? Everything exists right here, y'all. I was told that Earth was the center of everything. Like this, we are the center of the galaxy. You guys know how back in the day, they they that's what they believed, that Earth was at the center of everything. Earth is at the center of everything. Like that, and I was told that Taurus energy is the epitome of being self-centered. You guys know how they make the sun, like the sun is self-centered and then they made it into something narcissistic? No, the real self-centered is being centered in the self, the heart chakra. Why? Because the heart chakra is the center for all the chakras. It's where all the chakras meet, right? The top three chakras meet here. The bottom three chakras meet here. So <laughs> Daisy said, purr. Me and my daughter say that all the time. <laughs> But yeah, like you meet in the middle, right? Right here, self-centered, heart-centered. That's really what it is, heart-centered. But it's self-centered because you're 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 comfortable and positioned within the self. But it's a very powerful energy because what I'm getting is that when you're connected with the heart chakra, when you're connected with the heart chakra. Um, nothing can shake you or nothing can move you is what I'm getting. So it's like, it's like a state of being very, very solid and centered within yourself. And it's like, when you're centered here, nothing can shake you or nothing can move you. It's like that immovable earth energy, that fixed earth energy that's being self-centered. And that is supreme magneticism. Everything is drawn to you. Everything is drawn to you. You don't have to move a finger. That's the empress. That's the empress, baby. 
we worship the earth mother but she doesn't have an ego about herself she's not like oh yeah you guys are worshiping me she we're her children so she's not looking at it from a narcissistic view you know what i'm saying we got to get back to the we got to get back y'all we got to get back this other ish is over with i already told you guys pluto last two degrees of capricorn it's over with it's over and i told you guys i'd be far in the future with stuff so i know a lot of you guys are like but i'm still having fun in the patrix and i'm still enjoying myself and blah, 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 blah. but it ain't going nowhere it ain't going nowhere it ain't gonna end up nowhere you're on a path to nowhere because the where we're going it, it ends with mother earth that's where it ends with so if it ain't about mother earth you ain't on shit. i don't care what you're talking about i don't care what you're talking about all this futuristic stuff and all these trends that everybody is in that shit gonna be beneath though it's over with for all of that anything that in, that you need like technology for you need you know all these things that has to deal with the old system if you need that in order to keep running what it is that you that that you got going on it's done with you better get back to the natural resources because that's the only thing that's going to be of value going into the future natural resources okay that's it not no digital shit because digital shit that stuff is so fragile. What happens if the power lines go off? What happens if we have a blackout? What happens if we don't have no internet? Then everything that you just invested in is gone. It don't mean nothing. Okay? So you need to, everything you just need to be focused on is uh, the, the valuable resources. And then there's also intangible resources, but it still has to deal with what's organic. Right? I told a client the other day, because she had heavy Taurus energy in her chart and she was going through a Taurus activation. I said, listen, I said, oh, yeah, she had Taurus in the first house, right? She said, she said um, that, or no, not she said, I told her that I was like, if you were to strip yourself down naked, with nothing you had nothing on your body just you like in your rawest truest form what's your value that's the question you got to ask yourself if you're ha if you're struggling finding out like what your innate value is ask yourself that question if you were to take off all your clothes everything nothing no jewelry no nothing on and you were to ask yourself what is my value now that's how you find out what your true value is. And what you're going to find out is that the majority of your value is intangible. That's what you're going to find out. Because you ain't going to be able to say my car, my nine to five job I'm working, my money I have in cryptocurrency, my, you ain't going to be, that don't give you no value. I don't give a fuck about cryptocurrency. I'm, I'm sorry. I know a lot of you guys are invested in that shit, but that shit don't got no value to me. I'm talking about Taurus value, real things, not um, this imaginary shit. Cause that's what it is. It's imaginary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Like, and you're going to see it soon. If you need some other type of system or something else in order for whatever you have going on to survive, then it's not authentic. And I'm only telling you guys this because the North Node is in Taurus and it's very, very important for what we're getting ready to go into. So we got to get back to the basics but also it's like the future at the same time it's crazy it's like i'm seeing this merging of like the old with the new and like merging them together but um yeah it's it it's time to get back to like what is real and the innate real value and what we're going to find when we do start communing back with the nature and with the land and things like that we're going to find what what real 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 value is and it's going to be something that really fills us up really makes us happy and really brings us true joy because true joy comes from the heart center the heart chakra 
that's what we need to be focused on right now, honestly. So all this other stuff is just not important. It's just not. I don't want to be involved in it. I don't. I want to find out who I truly am and what my value is to this planet outside of the fake matrix. Like, I don't want to find my value there. What is my true value? What's my true ancestry? What's truly in my bloodline? I've been researching my bloodline. I'm trying to find the regions that I am from so that I can go back there and commune with the land and connect with the land there. Because I'm about to start getting on my traveling stuff again, the travel priestess, because the lands need our energy. I was also told that when it comes to the place being rich, right? You already know if a land or wherever, you'll know if it's rich by how much like green greenery is around. Like that's how you determine what's, if a land is rich or not, is how green it is. That's literally what I was told. Why you think in these rap songs they talk about, they call it, they literally call it like earth names. Like they'll be like, I have broccoli, I have cabbage. I got that green. I got that. They're talking about the earthly resource, the earth. That's what they're talking about. The earth. That's why they call it that. They call it the natural. They, they name money after crops and stuff like that. They call it cheese. It's always something that deals with the earth. Like I said, when they talk about being rich, you guys heard of rich soil. In order for something to grow and be prosperous, you have to have rich soil. Okay? So when a planet, I mean, not when a planet, whoo, when a, when a city or a state is not prosperous, it's most likely because it doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't have a lot of that greenery. You don't got a lot of that greenery, man. You need that greenery. That greenery is abundant. You know that a lot of you guys drink chlorophyll, same thing. Okay. So that is the true abundance point blank into the period. Okay. So, um, yeah, I just want to tell you guys that there was something else I want to tell you guys too. Let me look through my notes. Y'all put your questions or comments in the chat if you have any. I'm going to look through my notes real quick. <sighs> okay. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to upload this. I'm, I did a Seattle reading. That I'm going to upload. And that reading has a lot to deal with what I'm talking about right now. In fact, I may put it on my main channel too, just so you guys can watch it. I did a um, spiritual geography reading on Seattle and that reading really, really explained a lot because a lot of the uh, geography readings that I've been doing have been talking about how basically there was civilizations thriving here they did not tell you guys the truth about the civilizations that was here before, you know, uh, um, colonizers, colonizers came and took it over. They did not tell you guys the truth of what was really popping over here, especially in America. It was a thriving ass civilization over here, super thriving civilization. And they came and freaking tricked their way in and um, took over. But see, this is the thing. And this is what's messed up about it is the earth priestesses, like I told you guys, were responsible for the rights. There's rights, there's earthly rights that we have to do in order to keep the crops growing, in order to keep the weather right, in order to keep everybody in sync and all of these things. And if we don't do those rights, stuff gets messed up. This is what I'm talking about with the indigenous stuff. Like we have certain rights and certain holidays and certain, uh, cycles and the solstice and all these different times that we're supposed to be doing certain rituals and things like that in order to keep the abundance flowing to the land. That's what an earth priestess is. But we ain't been doing that. 
You know what I'm saying? So yes, unbalanced, mama vet, exactly. And that's what was revealed in the Seattle reading that I did. Ooh, that reading was deep, y'all. It was deep. And I'm not going to give too much away right now. But um, it explained a lot about the people that live in certain regions, why they experience certain problems and issues. It's because these things are not being done. These earth rights are not being done. So, baby, it's a lot. And I know this isn't something like we're not just going to stop everything that we're doing and just go back to nature. But see, the thing is, is that when it comes to going back to nature, a lot of people have sold this to you guys as like, let's just go back to nature in the tropics and eat fruit and like lay around all day and just eat fruit and be jolly. And like, no, that's not what when I talk about going back to nature, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living in harmony and balance with nature. But it's not something that I can do by myself. It takes a group. It takes a tribe. This is the real reason why Uranus is in Taurus right now. That's what it's talking about. Y'all think it's talking about some cryptocurrency and shit like that. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the tribes coming back together again because I keep getting this transmission that Mother Earth wants us to come back together because it's something about group consciousness. I can't do this by myself. I can't go and do these things, these rites and things like this by myself. I have to have a group. I have to have a tribe. It has to be all of us together, one mind, doing it. You know? Collective tribes in nature. Yeah, it has to be collective. That's Uranus and Taurus. Whenever we're talking about Taurus, just know we're never talking about anything inauthentic. Taurus is the first authenticity of the soul. Okay? It's like, like I said, when you strip yourself down to nothing, what is your value? That's what Taurus is. When you ask yourself that question, then you'll start to get a real understanding of like what your true value is. It's the truth. So, you know, it's important, y'all. And it's coming. And like I said, it's not happening right at this moment, but it's definitely on the horizon. A new world, I mean, it's here. You guys can see it, smell it, touch it, taste it. You know, it's here. And, um, you know, we just got to find a way to organize because we have work to do. Oh, my goodness. And then it's like there's different regions of the world. So this is getting into traveling also because I've been getting a huge transmission that we need to start traveling more because our energy is needed in different regions of the planet to help heal the planet. So when you guys want to talk about healing Gaia and stuff like that, we're the ones that are supposed to heal her. We are the ones that are supposed to go to certain energy points and certain energy vortexes and um, resurrect the energy there and stuff like that. We're the ones that are supposed to heal her. We're the only ones that can heal her. Okay. So, um, and union just keeps coming up. It's like this union energy. It has to come in. We're going to discover so much and it's going to give us so much life purpose. So much life purpose. And then I also found out the value of Capricorn. So you guys know how we've been talking about Taurus right now. Capricorn. Oh, my God, you guys. Let me tell you about Capricorn. Big Capricorn. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you what I have found out about Capricorn, baby. And how they tried to switch this Zodiac wheel up and try to make people feel embarrassed and bad about certain placements that they have because them placements held power, like moon and Capricorn, my placement. But listen, Capricorn, Capricorn is basically the Holy Grail. Like that's what Capricorn represents, the Holy Grail. Capricorn is the building of a spiritual and physical body. Capricorn is something, it is the epitome of the ending of the great work, the alchemical process of creating something that take years and years for the earth to produce. So when we talk about Capricorn, we're talking about the crown jewel of earth. 
we're talking about ancient energy. When you talk about Capricorn, you're talking about ancient earth. That's elder earth. This is something that took freaking centuries to create. That's Capricorn. This is why Saturn Capricorn represents antiques. It's like one of a kind. You cannot find this anywhere. This is something that this is artifacts. Capricorn rules artifacts. Things that are so valuable because they're ancient. Capricorn deals with ancient energy, okay? Meaning this goes back to the beginning. This goes back to the bones of the earth. This is ancient wisdom, ancient knowledge that took a very long time to reach that level. This is why Capricorns rever so much because it's like it's wisdom and, and things that are valuable things that are created over a long period of time. So, you know, time, time is valuable. Time, time is like everything because you can't get time back. You can't unless you become a time travel traveler in Aquarius, then you can, but that. That's for the next live. I ain't going to get into Aquarius ass right now because we'll be here all day. But um, it's like an old ancient artifact that was like really, really hard to find. And it's like so valuable. And it's like you have to treat it with so much care and so much. So you know how Taurus rules the, the resources, right? Taurus rules, you know, all the valuable resources, all we, all the things that we need to survive. That's Taurus. All the things we need to survive, right? Our basic senes uh, our basic necessities, our basic necessities and things and the things we need to live, right? Taurus is very important. But Capricorn is like some old old ancient relic that is like so exotic and it's like, "Oh my god, like when you behold it, you're like this took 67,000 years to create. You know what I mean? Like, shit. And it's some stuff from like, wait, it's old. It's old and it's ancient. It's stuff that we should treasure. It's like real treasures. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I found out that that represents the Holy Grail. Exactly. Crystals. Mm -hmm. How crystals take forever. Diamonds, they say it's made like in the center of the earth and it takes all these years to create. And that's why they're valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Guess what? Did you know that you have a crystal body? Yeah. Them damn diamonds that they be talking about got so much value. What about your diamond body? That's the value I'm talking about. Your diamond body. Because yes, there is a such thing as a diamond body. Yeah. Ancient knowledge and ancient wisdom. And it's something that you cannot duplicate. You can't duplicate it because it took so much time to create. So this is talking about the Christ child. This is talking about the Holy Grail. Yes, that's what the Holy Grail really is. The Holy Grail is the creation of some of like a being or a person or something that it took generations and generations to create this perfect mixture and it was carefully constructed. It was carefully put together. And it's like so fragile because a lot of stuff went into creating it and making it. That's also the Magna Mater. Capricorn rules the Magna Mater. Yeah, this is alchemical stuff. Okay, so yeah, the crystalline body activation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All of this is talking about you, you guys. When they talk about this valuable stuff, diamonds and all this other shit, this is talking about your spiritual body. This is talking about your spiritual energy. You are the only thing of value. Like, what are you talking about? You're the only thing of value. Do you understand that? So the fact that people put this material shit over like human beings is, is insane. It's absolutely crazy. OK, so in a nutshell, and then I'm going to close this out. This North Node in Taurus is about understanding your innate value of children as children of the earth, as children of the planet, that you're irreplaceable, that the earth needs you. That you make things, you make shit shake around here. You start stuff and you end stuff like 
your value is so beyond anything that could ever be described. Like, it's just crazy to me. Like when I started really understanding my true value as a divine feminine, as an indigenous woman, as, you know, even with the knowledge and wisdom that I have, I'm like, there's no price tag anybody could ever put on me. That's why I don't sleep with motherfuckers for money. You can never, ever put a price on my womb or on my body. Okay? There's nothing that can pay for it. So that's how much you need to value yourself. I'm sacred to the earth. Okay? I'm a daughter of the earth, of this planet. And when you want to talk about, you know, when we talk about claiming certain regions and all this other stuff, we're, it's the entire earth. Don't limit yourself. Okay. So yeah, we got to stop. I've been, I've stopped focusing on the distraction, but Jordan's like, we got to stop uh, focusing on these distractions in the major. Yeah, exactly. We have to stop, you know, uh, we just have to realize our value. That's just what I'm getting. So it's like, it's not even about stopping like, you know, the distractions. This is what I'm getting. The moment that you really understand your value and who you truly are, you're automatically going to stop all that. It's going to come. It's going to happen automatically because you're going to be like, what? Like, I'm worth way more than this shit. Like, why am I even dealing with this shit? I'm royalty. You know what I'm saying? Once you start walking around like that with your head up high, you know who the F you are. You know that your source energy on this planet, baby, that other ish, it ain't going to have no, it's not going to have a chance. Like it's, it's literally not going to have a chance. And you're right. It's happening right now. Like I see it happening. I see it happening. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not really any rush on this energy that I'm telling you guys about. Cause it's already, it's already unfolding already unfolding it's already happening people are getting it but i just wanted to give you guys like an outline of it like the structure because i love giving structure i wanted to just give you guys the structure of it for you guys to understand like how powerful and important this is and you know how earth like really just wants us to come together in unity it's like one of those things like you know even with my grandmother that i talked about what makes a mother more happy than anything is to have all her children all together under one house, under one roof. There's nothing that makes a grandmother more happy than that, than having all her children together, like under one roof. You know what I mean? You know, so we just, we got to get it together, but we're getting it together. You know, I'm, I'm seeing it happen and I am. But I just wanted to give you guys like more context and more structure to what exactly is happening, you know, on the planet. And all of us have different roles. You know what I mean? We have different roles to play. Some of us have supporting roles. Some of us have leadership roles. But everybody's role is important because we're a part of an ecosystem. We're a part of a system where we all help each other out. And even though somebody may have a, a higher position, because see, this is how they took that Capricorn energy and turned it into some corporate shit. You guys see, you guys know the pecking order of like having a boss and having the employees and the supervisor and all of that. That comes from the natural order of the earth. That was not, these are all things, all this shit is duplicated. It's a carbon copy of the real world, which is nature. <laughs> It's just a copy of it. That's all it is. It's just a copy of the, the real world. So this natural hierarchy and things like that, that's how it worked in nature. We have the hierarchy, but the thing is, is that it's like, it wasn't like an ego thing, right? So it's like, even though you're a high priestess or a high priest, it's like, you're not power tripping off of that. You know, we have to stop the power tripping. The South Node is in Scorpio. It's not about that. It's not about having more power than another person or trying to lord over them or whatever the case may be. It's just about playing your role that you need to play within the, the entire system. Because when it all comes down to it, even if you're a priestess or a priest, you still ain't bigger than the cosmos. Like I always tell you guys, you're still not bigger than the cosmos. You're still not bigger than Mother Earth. You're still not. 
So that's what kept people in check. And that's what kept people humble. Because do you guys know how big the earth is? And this is what be cracking me up when people be like, we're running out of space. Like, we're overpopulated. Like, do you know how big the earth is, you guys? Like, we're not even taking up like 20% of the entire earth land. There's so much land like that has not even been discovered. We haven't even went to like the earth is massive. It's massive. So there's a lot to explore here. And we're supposed to be exploring and finding out shit and communing with the earth and getting transmissions and going into, you know, just <laughs> going into different portals. And, you know, like we're supposed to be figuring out what the F this is. Because also what I got was that this whole like fake matrix and things like that, the problem with that is that it blocks us out from our true purpose. So that's another question that I pose to you guys. This is another question that I pose. The question that I pose to you guys is if this matrix didn't exist, this fake matrix, if it didn't exist and you were just, living your life like if we were living in a more natural community lifestyle whatever then what would your purpose be what would your purpose be if we were living if if, if, if we weren't in this fake matrix where you got to go get a corporate job you got to work at target you got to work at walmart you got to work in finance you got to do all that because all that shit fake it's fake so what would you be doing in the earth plane, in the earth sphere. So when we're dealing with the earth sphere, we're dealing with tribes, we're dealing with, would you be a cook? Would you be the nursing mother? Would you be a doula? Would you be a therapist? Would you be the leader of ceremony? Would you be a high priestess? Would you be a high priest? Would you be a medium? Would you be a shaman? That's your real job, your real job. So that's another thing you need to find out. You need to find out what your real earthly job is, right? Because we got to make money. <laughs> we got to make money, but it's really not making money. All it is, is just paying back the earth because that's all you're doing. You're paying back mother earth for what she provides for us because she's our provider. She is our provider. So what we do is we do work for the community to pay back our dues. That's what we do. So you say, okay, what am I good at? What are my natural gifts? And what can I contribute to the tribe? What can I contribute to the community? And you may take a few years to develop this, right? It's not like it doesn't work like how it works in the corporate world, where it's just like, you got this job, now go to work. It's not like that. It's like, you may take three, four years to figure out what your purpose is and what it is you're supposed to be doing. And you may bring a new purpose into the tribe or you may take up something that, you know, people's already doing or you may work under someone as an intern and learn under them or whatever. But it's more heart centered. And also it's more so determined by like the tribe, too. So it's like if you're having a hard time figuring out what you're supposed to be doing, we can call a meeting. And, you know, the other people in the tribe can tell you the things that they see in you that they think is a gift and an asset if you're having a hard time figuring out what you're supposed to be doing or whatnot. And, you know, they can help you come, you know, um, come to terms where or come to know what it is that you're supposed to do or what you're supposed to contribute to the, to the tribe. And then some people ain't supposed to do shit because I told you guys about the observers there is the observers and the recorders that are just supposed to sit back and observe and watch everything that's going on. The watchers, you guys know about the watchers in the book and Enoch. So it's just, and, and it's just finding out and being in alignment with what your natural gifts are and not going outside of that. Like I said, if you're a naturally a quiet introverted person, then you shouldn't be cast in the role to be a performer because you don't feel comfortable doing that, right? So there's a job for everyone, okay? And it's something that is completely aligned with who it is that you are and you do the work for the tribe 
and everybody else is doing work for the tribe to contribute to it. So there's no need for money. Like, that's so stupid to me. It's so stupid, y'all. It don't make no sense. Get Bobby. Bobby said getting back to nature, getting back to the nature of self. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. Because when they say going back to nature, it's also talking about, like Bobby said, your natural self, your innate nature. Some of you guys are quiet. Some of you guys are introverts. Some of you guys are empath. Some of you guys cannot deal with this world. Like, you know, everybody wants you to be something other than what it is that you truly are. Like I said, if you're a quiet person and you don't like talking, then that's who the F you are. So what, your your value should be diminished because of that? Creator don't make no mistakes on people. So if that's who you naturally are, then that's who you naturally are. Why are we trying to make people other than them what they are? There's just so much work that has to be done. Like when I think about it, it overwhelms me. So I try not to think about the whole big picture all in one, but I try to just take it one step at a time. But I just hope that this um, strikes something in you guys to just start like thinking differently, you know? Oh, you're already with the tribe, Mama Vet. Ah, I love Jordan. Jordan said the whole Fatrix is stupid. <laughs> it is, bruh. <laughs> I'm just going to go through the comments really quick. Okay, so Farah the Frequency says, so with having money debt be considered karmic debt cycles that need to be cleared? Yes. Yes. It's just a representation because I told you guys this world is like a fake copy world of the real world. So in real life, you don't have debt. You don't have money debt. Money's not real. So you don't have no debt. You don't have no credit card debt and all this other ish. You don't have debt, money debt in this world. You have real karmic debt, which is ancestral debt and debt that you incurred from past lives. That's the debt that you really need to be trying to take care of. But what I've found is that when you take care of your spiritual debt, your physical debt disappears. And I have experienced that in my life. Yes, I have a lot of Taurus Scorpio in my chart. And what I found is that when I take care of my spiritual debt, my, my earthly debt disappears or something it gets taken care of. I don't know. You guys need to start dealing in the real world. See, this is what the problem is. You guys are dealing with the secondary world instead of going to the source. The source is the real world. And I just told you guys how to clear your karmic debt by dealing with your ancestor shit. And yes, I'm probably going to start doing ancestral readings again. I may start because I know that you guys need a lot of help with this. And like anybody that I've done ancestral stuff for, I, it always changes their life when they're able to commune with their ancestors. Cause I know a lot of you guys may not be able to make contact and I make contact very easily. It's just like second nature. So, um, you know, let me know if you need help with that, you know, shit, I may do an uh, ancestral karmic debt <laughs> service. Okay. So y'all can start clearing your karmic debt because um, it's very important because what that does when you clear your spiritual karmic debt, it lifts a weight off of you because that's what Saturn is. That's what Scorpio is. It's this heaviness, burdensome. You need that energy off you. Once you get that energy off you, then your debt in the physical dimension is going to automatically resolve because that's the source of it really. It's spiritual debt that you're in, spiritual bondage. I specifically saw spiritual bondage. Bondage has to deal with Scorpio, okay? So you gotta take care of that stuff, you know, um, so that you can be free. Because once you're free internally, then you're free externally, okay? So you guys start working from the inside out. Don't work from the outside in. 
work from the inside out because you are the source. You're the source. Literally. I'm not making this up. You are the source. Okay. So whatever it is that you fix or you do within yourself, your outer reality has to reflect that. That's how this works, y'all. It's always internal before external. So go straight to the source of your karmic debt. Okay? And just work on it one, one at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all, don't don't and don't give it energy too. That's what I found about debt. Let me tell you guys something. I child, I've erased so much debt in my life. It's not even funny. I erase it by one, I don't give it life. Because you have to understand what did I just tell you guys? You are the source. Do you understand what that means? You are the source, meaning that you give life to everything. You give it life. So when you're sitting over here thinking about it and stressing out about it and it's feeding on you, it's sucking your life force. That's what debt does in this world. It's a it's a freaking vampiric energy to make you feel like, oh, my God, it's this heavy weight. What I tell you guys about the weight, it's a heavy weight. Oh, my God, I got to pay all this money and I don't know how to pay it. What is that doing? Sucking your life force. Don't give it energy. Stop feeding it and it'll disappear. And if it won't disappear, something's going to come up to diminish it in some type of way. I've had several debt in instances, even with like hospital bills and shit like that. When I tell you I detached from that shit and I didn't give it no energy. And then next thing you know, the lady's calling me, oh, we found an error. It looks like you actually don't owe this money. Like, we're just going to take it off, you know, like stuff like that. Because I was like, OK, because that's that's because I didn't worry about it or I didn't let it suck my energy. OK, because it's a parasite. That's what all this debt stuff is. It's a parasite. It's Scorpio. It's sucking you. It's vampiric. It wants your energy. So don't give it your energy. And raise your vibration at the same time. Then next thing you know, oh, it actually looks like you don't owe this amount. I don't know what happens. I've had magical shit like that happen to me. I swear to God. When I raise my vibration beyond what the problem is, miracles happen. Miracles are real, you guys. I'm telling you. They'll call you up and be like, oh, it's looking like it's showing zero balance. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, are you sure? And it's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, can you send me a copy of it so I can make sure it's paid off? And they're like, yeah, completely flip the script, completely change whatever it is that they were saying. That's the magic that you deal with. Don't let this stuff, don't let it overcome you. You're more powerful than it. You are the source, not this other stuff. That's also a part of this inherent indigenous wisdom that I'm trying to tell you. When I tell you you're the source, you need to believe what I'm saying when I say that. Of reality. Whatever it is that you believe, you're giving life to all this shit. That's what I found out, baby. When I found out, when I said, oh, shit, I'm the mother of life. Baby. Baby. When I found out, I'm like, oh, I'm the one powering all this shit. So I'm like, okay, so if I stop giving my energy to it, that means it dies. This is the Taurus Scorpio axis of life and death. What are you going to give life to and what are you going to starve? What are you going to kill off? You kill off what you don't give life to anymore. Stop making it a reality. You make it a reality by giving your attention and your energy and your life force to it. That's what I mean by you don't understand your value. You don't understand who you are. You don't really get it. Because if you got it from a spiritual level, you will understand that you're the life giver of like this whole thing. Okay? Without your source, 
there's no life. Point blank into the period. That's all you need to understand. Once you make the switch over in your mind, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. That's it. That's all. This is an eternal process. Okay? We're the ones that are keeping this shit alive. You want to talk about keeping it alive? We're keeping it alive. Through what? Our attention. I told you guys your energy is your currency. Whatever it is that you're giving energy to, you're keeping that reality, that dreamland alive. Because it's, it's, it's just a dream, honestly. It's not even real. We're keeping it alive through our attention to it. But we need to get back to what's real. And like I said, what's real is this earth energy and these earth resources. And people, human beings are real. So it's like, that's what we need to get back to. Okay. So um, that was pretty much it. I know it was a lot, but um, I had to freaking say that because that's been on my spirit since that eclipse. And I was just like, yo, this is for real right now. So, um, yeah, y'all, I know. Sit on that for a minute and think about that for a minute. But I had, I had to say this because it was very, very, very important for me to say it. I didn't have a choice. I had to say it. So, yeah, y'all. Um, thank you to anybody that gifted me money, too. I was like on a roll. Like I'm embodying my grandfather right now. I'm channeling because my grandfather, he's a Leo son and he got that solar fire. And like once he get to preaching, like he just goes on and on and on and on. It's like super powerful. But um, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. We can put the fire out for the night. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to be back on here, y'all. Until then, join my Patreon if y'all want some secret information. And um, I love y'all and I hope this resonated with y'all and that y'all just continue to be beautiful, amazing people. And yeah, we about to do the damn thing. Don't do the damn thing. It's already happening. It's in motion right now. So we, we good. Okay. I just came to remind you of who you are. That's why I came on here today to remind you of who you are. Okay. All right, y'all. So I love you guys too. I love all of you. Okay. And, um, We'll talk soon. <laughs> Bye.